Hello, welcome back to my Thoughtful Thursdays video channel where we take a look at important topics both inside and outside of the church. As always, please make sure you are subscribed and turn on your notifications below to see more videos like these in the future. Today we're going to be taking a look at the not at all controversial topic at all of religious exemptions for the COVID vaccine. For some reason it is controversial, it shouldn't be, but it is. My guess is that you have people in your life who are friends or family members who will not get the vaccine probably because of things that they have heard online. Now, I want to make a statement. There is a very, very small percentage of the population that cannot get the vaccine due to being allergic or maybe having some autoimmune disease. None of my video today is addressing that population as there is a legit reason for them not getting the vaccine. However, there is another population that is not getting the vaccine right now. Sadly, most of the people that I know who are refusing to get the vaccine would consider themselves followers of Jesus. For them, somehow this has turned into a religious argument. I'm not going to get the vaccine no matter what. It's against my religion. And for many who believe this type of thing, it feels like any press back against that idea is an attack on their religion. And it's sad that so many people are being so misled right now from misinformation online. Now you have to remember that these people are adults and they are making their own decisions. However, these people are also victims. They have been misled and duped into believing this. I honestly wish it were a religious talk. That would be way easier, but it isn't. Sadly, people are paying less attention to the words of Jesus about loving your neighbors yourself, and instead they are picking the words of their favorite politician or obscure internet site or radio program. But for me personally, it's hard to understand people who are claiming a religious exemption from this vaccine. When we break down the reasons for why people aren't getting this vaccine, it sounds a lot more like rugged individualism. It sounds more like not understanding science. It sounds a lot like politics. It sounds a lot like conspiracy theory more than it sounds like anything religious. And I understand religious exemptions to certain things inside of a religion. A Jewish person should not be forced to eat a cheeseburger. A Muslim person should not be forced to eat pork. Actually, Jewish people don't eat pork either, so neither of them should be. And I see sacred scriptures. I know the history there behind their religion. I find beauty when I see the culture in their religion. Or even this, I can understand Christians who are anti-war and refuse to be placed in combatant roles in the military. There is a religious exemption for that. After all, Jesus told Peter to put down his sword. I can see a religious exemption for something like that. I can understand a religious exemption for someone not wanting to pledge their oath to a flag. For some people of faith, they believe that they are citizens of heaven and not of this earth. And there is scripture and precedence there. I can see how that could be a religious exemption. However, for the COVID vaccine, not so much. Where did Jesus say that his followers shouldn't take the COVID vaccine? Was that in the gospel according to QAnon? Maybe followers of Jesus heard that there's this possible Q source for the gospels in the Bible, and they put two and two together. Boy, Q has really been around for a long time. <laughs> a little bit of source hypothesis humor for you. Brunch. Honestly, it's absurd. I can tell you with complete confidence that the Christian faith does not exempt people from getting vaccines. It isn't a part of our faith. I'm not saying you don't feel strongly about the vaccine. I believe you do. You might even feel as strongly against the vaccine as you feel about your faith, but it is not a part of faith in Jesus. And don't even get me started on the mark of the beast. There are people out there right now who are saying that the vaccine is the mark of the beast from Revelation. Please go back and rewatch my video on Revelation for people who believe that the mark of the beast is the vaccine. Leaders of the Jewish faith around the world are encouraging followers to get this vaccine. Leaders in Islam around the world are encouraging their followers to get this vaccine as well. Heck, even Pope Francis has some very strong words encouraging followers of Catholicism to get the vaccine. The Pope is puzzled by people's hesitancy in the church to receive the vaccine. Now, the Pope is the head of the Roman Catholic Church. He says that the vaccine is an act of love, and I agree with him. He says that humanity has a history of friendship with vaccines. Yet in today's society, we have these churches that are giving out religious exemptions to people like candy bars to get around vaccine mandates. And if you read the fine lines on these churches' websites, there's a massive one right here in Peoria. It isn't really about religious freedom at all. It's actually about the Constitution. Once again, this is not about Christianity. 
I read a comment the other day that said that one of the problems with American Christianity is that too many followers of Jesus can name more amendments to the Constitution than they can the Beatitudes of Jesus. I'll be darned if that isn't spot on for where the church is right now in the United States. Friends, you can't just get an exemption and say something is a part of your religion when it is not nor has never been a part of the religion. It clearly is not a part of the religious faith and more religious leaders need to be teaching this because the people aren't getting it. It's really easy for people to play the faith card in religion and say something like this. Well, I just really prayed about it and I really believe that I'm not supposed to get the vaccine. I believe that God is telling me not to get the vaccine. And then they come to us and say, see, I prayed about it. It's a part of my faith. No, it isn't. That's in your mind telling you that. That is confirmation bias that is telling you that. That is what you want to believe. So of course that's what you believe your deity is telling you. Don't blame this on God, it cheapens all of our faith. What if we all did that? It would be absurd. Well, I was just praying the other day and I felt like God told me specifically that I didn't need to pay my taxes. I mean, hey, you have to respect me now because I prayed about it. It's a part of my faith, religious exemption. Or this, I was praying the other day and God told me that I didn't need to wear a seatbelt anymore. It's my choice. It's a part of my religion because I prayed about it. No, it isn't. What about serial killers that were very spiritual people and they believed that God was telling them to do those murders? Obviously, they were wrong. Any leader of faith should look at these examples and say to their followers, they were clearly wrong. This is not a part of their faith. Like you don't beat around the bush when life or death is on the line. Just stop beating around the bush. Well, I mean, everyone is free to have their own opinions. We wanna make sure that everyone is heard. Everyone's voice is equal. We wanna make sure that all people can hear from Jesus equally. Constitutionally, everyone should have a right to listen to their own God. I believe that God gives people the right to make choices. Absolutely. I can make a choice to do well in my grad school classes or not. I can make a choice to love my LGBTQ plus friends and family or not. I can choose to maybe eat a certain food or not and, and abstain from it. I can choose whether I want to or not drink alcohol. Those are all personal choices and I have a right to make those personal choices. They are personal and they affect me and my faith with my God. However, I live in a society with other people. I'm not alone. I'm not a rock. I'm not an island. Some choices that I make affect those that are around me. I don't have the right to carry and transmit a deadly virus to lots Lots of other people. I don't have a right to be a part of an unvaccinated pocket of society where a virus can and will mutate into another variant. People who should not have died have died because people didn't get this vaccine. That is just a fact. The numbers don't lie to us, folks. You are 11 times more likely to die if you are unvaccinated and you contract COVID. And I'm not even gonna put a direct number out there because people will just bat down numbers right now. But if you die of COVID, the chances are, the very, very high chances are that you were unvaccinated. It is a really high percentage. And some people of faith within the church will say things like this. Well, God will protect me. Nothing will happen to me because God has everything planned out. Nothing is outside his plan. He knows exactly how you or I will die. If he doesn't want you to die of COVID, you won't. Well, let me tell you this. I'm a person of faith and I don't know how to tell you just precisely how bad that theology is. Really bad? Trash theology? That just isn't how God works. Now that might be how we wish God worked. I wish God were like a magical potion that would just protect me from everything, but he's not. And time and time again has shown us, and history has shown us, and story after story in the news keeps showing us that is not how God works. I right now have a friend in the medical health field who wished to remain anonymous for this video that reached out to me this very week to talk about just how bad things are. It isn't just old people with comorbidities that are dying. People who shouldn't be dead are dead now because they weren't vaccinated. I'm sorry, that was not God's will. I would not trust anyone that voluntarily tells you that it is. The three Abrahamic faiths are encouraging followers to get the vaccine. 
I encourage you to get the vaccine. It is not too late to change your mind. I would highly respect anyone who changes their mind on this. Friends, that's all the time we have this week. Join me back here next week as we talk about Dave Chappelle's new special on Netflix, The Closer. You might want to take a look at it before we have our video so you know what we're talking about. You won't want to miss it. I'll see you back here next week. Same time, same place.